Hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our final class in our Introduction to Deep Learning course. Uh, today we're going to be covering Getting Started with Torch. It'll be presented to you by Allison Lowndes. As with our previous classes, uh, you are welcome to ask questions directly in the chat window. We have a, a group of our experts online to help answer. Um, they will uh, answer your question and then rebroadcast the question and answer so everyone can see. Uh, we will not be taking audio questions. Um, and if we don't get your questions, we will have an office hours next week where after taking the associated hands-on lab, uh, you can continue to ask more questions related to Torch. As a, um, with all our previous recordings, this will be posted to our Deep Learning course website, uh, which we'll post here separately. You can find all the prior recordings as well as slides and links to the hands-on labs. And uh, I encourage you to take the labs if you haven't yet, because they are going to be free until the another, for another two weeks um, while we finish up this course. So if you haven't taken them, now is a good time to do it while they're still free. Uh, so I think that's it. Allison, uh, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Okay, thank you very much, and welcome. Thanks for joining our fifth class in the Deep Learning series. Um, I'm actually based in Bristol right now in the, in the UK, um, but I'm actually from the north of England, Manchester, hence the accent. So wherever you are in the world, hi. I'm going to assume that everyone listening has already gone through the previous four classes. If you haven't, as Mark said, I'd highly recommend that you do. I realize live is fun, um, but this is being recorded, so you can come back anytime. So a quick, um, quick agenda. I'll just mention obviously the previous classes, um, cover a little bit about iTorch, and um, a reminder of why deep learning. Then we'll go through some um, preliminary introductions on Torch and the benefits, a little bit of in, information on installation, and the, um, more on the theoretical side, and then uh, go through again the current facility we have for Quit Labs, and some more information on software releases, roadmaps, and then there will be um, some advanced intel for you uh, later on. So I do have a slight delay when I'm actually changing slides, so just bear with me on that. So as Mark mentioned, um, also live now is our corresponding hands-on lab. And you can actually use this presentation material as a reference if you wish, um, but the labs are self-explanatory. If you are coming in cold, um, all of the classes and hands-on labs are online. Quick Labs uses IPython notebooks, and uh, we're running the same AWS, Amazon Web Services, GPU instance. So it does take around three or four minutes to set up the environment. Everything runs on the cloud, not on your computer, so there's no need to download any code right now. So you can either go to the developer zone for all your info, or simply go to Google and say, or type NVIDIA Deep Learning to be directed to all the resources that you'll need. These slides will be put up on the actual course site. So IPython notebooks um, are really great, but Torch thought that they could be better. So they actually wrote iTorch, which is an IPython kernel for Torch, enhancing your browser experience uh, even further with videos and images and embeddings. So a quick reminder, um, we have covered a lot of material in the previous four classes. So why we're here is to learn how to teach a machine to see and hear, but also to learn what it's both seeing and hearing. So not doing anything by brute force. This is learning. Um, I'm actually a deep learning solutions architect here at NVIDIA, so I have this fantastic job of seeing applications across the board in this incredible artificial intelligence field. So we have image classification, localization, action recognition, speech, speech translation. Um, in the uh, in-car tech area, we have um, pedestrian detection. Um, my personal research was, was on medical imagery and finding features within medical images and deep learning is all capable of doing this. So let's get going. 
Torch started around 2000 with Facebook's Ronan Colbert, the, uh, the main developer. Torch 7 is the current version, uh, the fourth. They use odd numbers only, so 1, 3, 5, 7 being the fourth. Um, this version is aimed at web scale learning in speech, image, and video applications. Torch is used exclusively for research and prototyping for unsupervised and supervised learning, reinforcement learning, and more. It's real state-of-the-art code. Facebook especially spends a great deal of time improving parallelism for multi-GPU, model, data, DAG, directed acyclic graphs, and overlapping techniques to improve host device communication. Uh, plus, there's lots of development in kernel speed for convolutions, etc. So um, current maintainers are Ronan Colibert, um, who's at Facebook, Clement Farabay, who is now at Twitter. You may know him from his Mad Bits site, which Twitter then acquired. Um, Corre is um, at DeepMind, uh, or Google DeepMind. And Sumith Chintala is at Facebook in Facebook's AI lab. Torch is widely used in many research labs and companies, um, including obviously Facebook, Google, Twitter, but also NYU, um, the IDAP Research Institute at Purdue, uh, Element Inc., and uh, Wet Lab. So the first thing I would advise you is to jump straight to the cheat sheet. Life is busy. Coders figured out efficiency a long time ago. Um, Torch is maintained by top coders, way more ninja than I am. So um, I'll actually be using some of their material in both this presentation and particularly in the hands-on lab. They are all very happy to op offer this assistance because they want you using their highly optimized framework, Torch 7. The cheat sheet and all the code are maintained on GitHub. But if you do have advanced questions only, you can head over to Gitter, where most of the devs hang out. But please, for install or newbie questions, go to the Google group first um, for very quick responses. The community behind Torch is extremely good, but they do need to split the support workload. So Google groups for install and new queries, Gitter for chat and advanced questions, or just to hang out and watch some, some real master coders at work. So why Torch? Basically, Torch is built on um, Lua, which is a scripting language, a very quick scripting language. Um, it allows for complex applications to be compiled and optimized, but it's also embeddable into any environment, iPhone, video games, web backends. The complete Torch framework can run on an iPhone with no mods to scripts whatsoever. Torch's universal data structure, the table, can also be used as an array, a dictionary, hash table, class, struct, object, or list. Torch 7 extends the table with a tensor um, object. We'll go further into tensors later, but you, you should have heard about them already in previous classes. This is a, a, an n-dimensional array type. For training neural nets, autocoders, linear regression, convolutional neural nets, recurrent neural nets, etc. It's all about gradients and loss functions. And Torch's NN package provides it all. It's also extremely simple to, to recast uh, predefined models, um, switching to GPU. It's as simple as, uh, as, as the slide shows, model, colon, CUDA, and defining inputs as a CUDA tensor. If runtime speed is a priority for you, if the convenience of a very easy to use scripting interface is a priority for you. And definitely, if you need to use multi-GPU, then Torch um, should be the choice of framework. So more benefits again. Um, very efficient tensor library, similar to, uh, to NumPy with CUDA for neural network computations. A dedicated NM package uh, for directed acyclic computation. Um, again, I'll stress, really great community and industry support. Um, several hundred community built maintained packages. We'll go into that um, in a few more slides. It's, it's in very active use for state-of-the-art neural network research. Um, so therefore, it, 
already has fast, efficient, easy to use multi GPU support. Um, it's also, as the um, all the maintainers will will tell you, has an awesome interface to uh, to see via the Lua scripting language. Uh, very fast due to the um, just-in-time compilation. It's also very easy to learn. But um, right from the word go, the reason they, they, they liked it is simply because it's embeddable um, and currently has ports to iOS, Android, even FPGA backends. So again, it's the support that you get from Torch. Um, I personally got loads of help when I first started using this, and I've coded in Python, C, C++, Java, even a bit of Haskell, but um, Lua was just trivial. So um, just try it. OK, so the Torch core consists of the following packages. Um, each package repository usually includes its own documentation with, um, with a readme, which may contain links to the docs directory. Um, there are many packages. Torch, and then um, I won't bother going through that entire list. Um, we'll talk about the, uh, the, the Trepl later. So a bit more information on Lua. Uh, this actually originated um, in Brazil. It's a um, very powerful, fast, lightweight. Um, and again, it's because of its embeddable nature that it was picked out. Uh, it combines simple procedural syntax. Um, it's dynamically typed. Um, it runs by interpreting bytecode for register-based virtual machines. It has automatic memory management with incremental garbage collection. Um, it's actually maintained by a team at PUC Rio. Uh, that's the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And it's actually now housed at Lab Lua, I believe, which is a, a laboratory of the uh, computer science department there. Um, it offers excellent support for OOP, for object-oriented programming, also for functional programming and data-driven programming. Its table implements associative arrays in a very efficient manner. That's um, an array that can be indexed not only with numbers, but also with strings or any other value of the language. Tables actually have no fixed size. They can be resized dynamically. Um, they can even be used as virtual tables over another table to simulate various um, OO paradigms. Um, tables, in fact, are the only data structuring mechanism in Lua, um, or rather Lua 4 now. So it's very powerful. Um, and the tables themselves are, are used to represent ordinary arrays, etc. So um, Lua itself comes with a very handy package manager called Lua Rocks. The packages are, are colloquially known as Rocks. Um, different demos and tutorials rely on different third-party packages. So if a demo crashes because it can't find a package, then simply install it using Lua Rocks as in, as in the code here. And there are many. I'll list a few, but there, there, there's actually hundreds. So for general maths, you, you have the, the standard Torch package. Um, Defies is the mathematical functions library, um, which um, it, it was actually the, well, is the heart of SciPy, uh, which you'll probably already be familiar with. Uh, Graph, obvious. Um, NumPy is the um, random kit. Uh, Signal includes FFT, Hilbert, um, there are many different data uh, formats supported. So S CSV Go is a CSV library. You have uh, Lua CJSON for um, fast encoding parsing. MatTorch uh, MIDI for reading, writing, and manipulating MIDI data. Audio image, obviously. Uh, graphics Magic, if anybody uh, uses the, the Graphics Magic API. Um, of course, it has machine learning with NN, the um, domain neural network package. Um, NN Graph provides graphical computation. DP is the deep learning library for streamlining research and development. DPNN is the deep extensions to NN, uh, which provides things like reverse table 
um, and then Inception, if you're all familiar with um, those graphical uh, plays that have been going on around the internet recently. It also has RNN, um, obviously Recurrent Neural Network Library. Um, UNSUP is a package for unsupervised learning in Torch. Uh, Manifold to manipulate manifolds, um, component analysis, um, and also reinforcement learning, which of course is, is still um, evolving. Uh, for visualization, we already know about iTorch, but it has um, Qt, um, uh, Qt Torch, also um, display. For Q, uh, computer vision, you have FEX, which is feature extraction. That's if you're SIF people and, and you still want to, uh, to play with those um, handcrafting modules. Um, natural language progression, again, NN, RNN. Senna, uh, this used to be a state of the art, so that's um, in there in the NLP rocks. And you have many distributed computing, parallel processing with, with simple names like parallel and threads, which is one of Ronan Colibert's original ones. This allows trivial data sharing between the actual threads. And um, I, I also picked out just a, f a few random picks um, just to show you just the, the width and breadth of this. But you have um, LuaSec, which is a binding for open SSL library. So you can provide SSL communication over Lewis socket. Um, LMDB Torch, obviously an LMDB wrapper. Uh, CL Torch um, is the OpenCL implementation, or CLNN for the OpenCL neural network imp implementation. Um, and as I said, just many, many more. So for, for installation, um, I believe the, uh, the current workload is, is shared as follows. Um, Twitter's Clement Farabay maintains the iOS. Uh, Sumith Chintala maintains the Android. Um, there's, there's even an instant launcher from the Torch site to an AWS um, instance like we use in the hands-on lab. Um, so if you want to continue playing the easy option um, with a predefined environment, then you can actually use that. And again, the cheat sheet also offers Docker images for um, currently both Q7 and 6.5. Of course, that will be updated accordingly. Um, it has a long list of easy data set loaders and install sites, since obviously you can't do deep learning without data. Um, I personally jumped straight into Facebook's um, FB Coon code, which um, Again, and this, you know, obviously, I think most people know this, but requires a minimum Ubuntu 14.04 and a CUDA capable machine or NVIDIA GPU. Um, some have tried to do deep learning on Windows, but um, I always say resistance is futile. Stick with Linux, um, Ubuntu 14.04, and you shouldn't have any problems. I believe some, there are groups out there that um, are trying to do CUDA ConvNet too on Windows, but um, I'll leave you to it. So command line um, installs are extremely simple. Um, on this particular code here, the first script installs the, the basic package dependencies that LuaJIT and Torch require. The second script installs LuaJIT and Lua Rocks. And then Lua Rocks, the package manager, uh, will install the core packages like Torch, NN, paths um, and a few other packages. So the Torch ecosystem itself relies on Lua Rocks for package distribution. Each is distributed via a, a Git repo. Um, and Torch 7 relies on that LuaJIT dynamic interpreter, similar to Python, um, but it's got very high flexibility and interoperability um, with an unmatched, some would say, assembly written, state-of-the-art, low memory footprint. The, the raw LuaJIT interpreter is, is actually very basic. So a package was developed called Treple, a torch read eval print loop, or REPL or shell. Um, and that's just packed full of convenient features um, like tab completion on nested namespaces, history, which is preserved between sessions, auto print after eval. That can be stopped with a semicolon as standard. Um, each command is profiled, timing is reported. It's just very easy and very intuitive. 
So once installed, um, you, you simply run torts with TH to start the, um, the treple. And for example, in this code on the, on the slide, it's just TH and then your actual file name. And then you tell it where the actual data is residing. You tell it how many GPUs you're using, tell it which backend you're using, and which model that you're going to train with. It's as simple as that. So this is um, obviously a screenshot. It's a bit difficult. I hope you can see this. Um, alternately, you will be given uh, PDFs of, of all these slides anyway. Um, it's quite difficult sticking a, even a, a small entire neural network uh, program into uh, one screen. But uh, neural networks in Torch are constructed basically using the NN package. Um, modules are the bricks, as Sumit says, used to, um, to build the networks. But each of themselves are neural networks. So they can all be combined with other networks. Um, and you, then you can also bring in containers to create really complex neural networks. Um, so for example, Lynette is a simple feed-forward network, takes the input, feeds it through several layers, one after the other, and then finally gives the output. Um, and such a network container is, as this code shows in the screenshot, and then sequential, which basically feeds the input through several layers. So obviously, QDNN is a big part of this. Um, and um, vast improvements, have, to be honest, have been, have been brought to deep learning simply thanks um, to not only our developers and the QDNN library, but for the simple fact that we work closely with Torch, we work closely with all the other frameworks as well. But QDNN is integrated deep into Torch um, with bindings from Facebook's AI research for deep learning and convolutional nets, um, so much that, that there is just really highly run um, efficiency on, uh, on GPU. The best progress is made through collaboration. Um, and obviously, we're happy to be offering direct support. For, for deep learning, but it's, um, it, it is a collaboration. Sumit's, um, this is Sumit Chintala of Facebook. His interface to QDNN for Torch 7 allows you to, to use QDNN as one of the highly efficient component backends, um, exploiting parallelization over multiple GPUs, FFT. Uh, Facebook used to have the, uh, the, the, the quickest FFT out there. I mean, that was probably March, but um, people will be battling for, for that one. Custom CUDA kernels, and, and there are loads of other tricks. Alex Kusevsky's CUDA Convnet 2, Kermit Farabay's um, NN Spatial Convolution MM module, for example. And um, it's, it's all available um, up on the, uh, especially on Sumis GitHub. Um, he, he does hold most of the code there. And it's all open source. So just go grab it and, um, and train with it. So a little bit more detail on tensors. Um, you should be aware of it now because we, we have covered it in previous classes. Um, but it is, it is the most important in Torch. Um, quick reminder, obviously, it is a serializable, potentially multidimensional matrix. Um, but basically, the number of dimensions is unlimited. Um, and, and this is um, due to the long storage. Uh, there are several types of tensors um, that are all self-explanatory byte tensors for unsigned um, characters, uh, char tensor for signed, short, int, float, double tensor, self-explanatory. Um, a tensor, if you think of it in this way, it, um, it, it, it's helpful in the theoretical sense that a tensor is a particular way of viewing a storage, which only represents a chunk of memory, while the tensor itself interprets that chunk of memory as having the actual dimensions. So, it can be easily manipulated within, uh, within Torch itself. So moving on, um, you can learn more. Um, Jörg um, Ostrovsky at DeepMind, um, I believe he's still at DeepMind, um, has a really excellent um, tutorial to, to really fully understand the, uh, the theory behind the tensors. Um, the actual data is contained in what's called a storage. Um, and this is how Lua accesses the memory of a C pointer or an array. Storages can also map the contents of a file to memory. 
obviously because it's an array of basic seed types. Um, I mentioned the actual uh, the classes previously, um, but um, the the interesting thing about tensor factorization um, and the methods used specifically by, for example, Fiano and, uh, and CUDA, they, they all work on the basis that data has these unobserved properties seen in clustering. And patterns and behaviors that can be found um, with the 40-year-old techniques of expectation maximization or maximum likelihood learning. Um, it, it all involves guessing and then updating parameters iteratively until a set threshold for significant results is met. Um, unfortunately, this technique is, is clearly non-convex. It, it produces different results each time as there are you know, an exponential number of regions in, in a problem space. We're, we're dealing with massive problem spaces here um, and a different number of regions that you may land in, many different local maxima. So finding the global maxima, maxima is very hard in this sense, but to efficiently find the same local maxima, you can now compute a large table of statistics and use them to recover the parameters which found that local maxima. So it essentially becomes an identifiable moment, should we call it, um, simple matrix decomposition with, ten with tensors, therefore, essentially can now guarantee good results. But you can, um, you can learn a lot more about this in, um, in as I said, in, in Jörg's tutorial. I'd, uh, I'd recommend going, going and seeing it. Um, and that's the, um, that's the GitHub there that leads to it. But again, we'll send these slides out and put them on the, uh, up on the web. So CUDA itself, um, very simple. You, you simply call require QTorch, um, QNN, or QNNX, which is a, an experimental um, implementation, um, or QDNN, which is the, the, the main QDNN bindings for Torch, um, clearly on a, on a CUDA-capable machine. Um, it's, CUDA is just simply well suited to Torch, um, but it's because of Torch's flexibility and scalability that it's very impressive. So basically, you can even you can even put any of this code with Torch on our embedded boards, um, and there are specific install and, and usage instructions um, at that link there. So you can actually work with our Jetson TK1 development kit with Torch and literally embed your code onto drones, onto phones, you know, the, the, there's so many different applications. It's actually quite fun to work with. So um, have a play around on that. We, um, there, there's lots of tutorials, et cetera, to, uh, to go into that further. So um, digits. At this point, all I can say is coming soon. We are working very hard on this. Um, we, we have covered digits already in, um, in this course, so you should be familiar with, with what it is, um, our deep learning GPU training system. Um, I would like to say no more than a couple of months, but as I said, developers are, are working really hard to, to get a beta out to you. Um, and um, once that happens, then you know, you, you'll have that full functionality of, uh, of digits, which um, I can't stress enough. This um, is actually a screenshot of um, digits and torch being run. Um, obviously, it looks quite similar to CAFE, but that's, that's because it's the, it's the digits uh, format. But this is raw torch output. And um, I'll show you the, the, the logs as follows. But our developers are working really hard um, and around the clock to get this full integration for you. Um, as I said, it will be very soon. So standard log out, uh, standard out logs are um, they're just extremely informative, um, especially if you if you then go into using the FBQ and code, you uh, you just know everything that's that's going on. Um, I, I know this is common across the board, but it just really is very informative um, for for command line especially. So it's probably going to be fairly difficult for you to uh, to see all these, but again, slides will be uh, will be sent to you. So standard out logs here. Um, 
letting you know exactly what's going on behind the scenes, exactly um, what the what the code is doing, uh, what uh, the, the different timings. I'm not sure how many of you are actually already at this stage where you where you're running, but um, it definitely does help with the um, with the learning curve of understanding this until you actually get the kind of visualization that, that we can offer in, uh, in digits and whether or not you've already played with cafe and digits. It does help to see that visualization side, but um, many logical coders would, uh, would argue and say that the command line is better. So again, the, the actual torch standard out is, uh, is just extremely helpful. So an example um, neural network in, in Lua, um, apologies for the, uh, for the tiny size again, but um, just going into a little bit more detail here, you've got the, the first layer applies 16 filters to the, uh, to the input map. Um, I don't think I can, uh, I can do pointing here for you. Um, so it's choosing randomly among um, different layers um, using the fan-in parameter, each times five. Uh, the receptive field of this first layer is five by five and the maps produced by it are therefore 16 by 28 by 28. So this linear transform is then followed by um, TANH nonlinearity and an L2 pooling function, as you can see from the, uh, from the code. So that pools regions of size two by two, um, so stride of two by two. Um, the result of that operation is a 16 by 14 by 14 array. So that represents a 14 by 14 map of 16 dimensional feature vectors, um, the receptive field of each at this stage being seven by seven. The second layer, similar to the first, except that now the 16 dimensional feature maps are projected into two, five, six dimension maps with a fully connected connection table. So each unit in the output array is influenced by a four by five by five neighborhood of features. Again, it's quite difficult to sort of tell you this in a, in a presentation style, but um, it, it is worth, I always like to, you know, literally go right through the code to, to figure this out, um, even if you're using out of the box code. Um, so you've got this four by five by five neighborhood of features in the previous layer. Um, that layer therefore has four by two, five, six by five by five trainable kernel weights plus 256 biases. So the result of the complete layer convolution and pooling is a five by five array of two, five, six dimensional feature vectors, which is then flattened into a 6,400 dimension vector and fed to the two layer neural net. So the final prediction, 10 dimensional distribution over classes is influenced by a 32 by 32 neighborhood. Um, and this is, um, this is why UV, um, pixels, basically, um, in, in this particular example. So you're defining um, color space. So as this slide shows, um, what I was actually working on was, um, and, and this is a sample of the Y channel data, and this is the SVHN data set, which is the Street View house numbers data set from Google. Um, a little bit more code for you to actually see. Um, so you, you have th and then the, the doall.lua. Uh, this is Clement Farabay's code. Again, he has some great tutorials on his Madbits site. Um, this particular setting was size small, um, where you're basically testing on 10,000 images as opposed to 73627, I think by memory, um, total images in the actual data set. Um, now, I actually stopped my own testing at 92, uh, my, my own training, sorry, in code at 92.95. And the actual speed up, um, just for interest, from a 2.66 CPU, which is actually hyperthreaded to 12, was 19 minutes with a 4.75 speed up on a, on a K40. Um, so this, as I said, was my own testing, but um, there's, um, there's lots more and you can play with the SVHN code and train on our hands-on lab. So again, um, further help, 
and please ask for help. There is a large community of developers out there. Um, as stated previously, please use the Google group for, um, for installation problems um, and newbie questions because they're well used to answering them. And there's lots of people um, using it, and it's a, a very helpful community. Um, if you are advanced, head over to Gitter, um, and you can discuss with the actual developers and, and a whole lot more. But there is also a GitHub issues page that you can, um, that you can visit and, uh, and get lots of extra help with. So the actual hands-on lab. Um, clearly, I can't um, do everything just in, in a presentation and by voice. So I would encourage you to go and try out our own lab. It's live now. Um, it was actually enabled um, very much by Sumith at Facebook AI Research and Clement um, at Twitter. Um, if you're not familiar, then take the time to actually just run through the video on the, um, on the main Quick Labs page um, to understand how the lab environment loads. Um, it, it, it will take three to four minutes to actually load anyway, so you get to learn how IPython notebooks work. But we are using iTorch in the actual hands-on lab. So if you haven't yet signed up for it, please do. It's, um, as Mark said earlier, it's, it's free until at least this, um, this deep learning course finishes. I would say possibly October. I'm not sure the actual date. Um, create an account. Um, literally go to the Getting Started with Torch 7 Lab and just click Start. It will load up the environment, and you can just take your time. I think you get up to two hours. Um, there, there are certain requirements for the actual browser, but again, no code runs on your actual machine, um, and you're actually using a, um, uh, an NVIDIA GPU um, in, the, in the instance. So as far as um, software releases go, um, all our supporting software is in constant development alongside Torch. Um, I did say earlier that we work closely with them. So if you are signed up as, um, as developers on our developer zone online, you'll be informed at every release. The, um, the actual releases that we have is, it has effectively doubled performance for, uh, for deep learning now. Um, with, with digits, once that comes online fully for, uh, for Torch, um, multi-GPU scaling um, allows models to be trained literally up to two times faster. Um, QDNN. Three, uh, two times faster for um, training with, with training support for larger models. Um, CUDA 7.5 release, again, is two times larger data sets. So it, we're, we're all working hard for you. And as I said, this is constant evolution of, uh, of software as well as our, our hardware. Um, Torch 2 are in constant evolution. So they're current roadmap is um, for the NN container to have a unified interface um, between containers and, uh, and graph. They are busily uh, developing and optimizing the RNN package for recurrent neural nets. Um, they intend to split the NN package into THNN and NN so that THNN um, is, the, um, is a package using the, uh, the REPL using TH as the back end and NN would be the Lua layer. So THNN can then be used as a standalone C library. And the same for uh, QNN. They're also intending to publish a lot more tutorials and working on a universal data set API uh, to support both GPU and CPU. Now, that would be uh, a fantastic tool. So um, I hope they can, uh, they can do that really quickly. Um, they are putting together a model zoo as well, like CAFE, just to, just to help people to, um, to, to get on board. So if you, if you are um, beyond beginner, even possibly even uh, intermediate level, then we actually have um, Nicholas Leonard uh, from Element Inc. doing an Applied Torch 7 webinar for us. Um, this is October 8, so I would recommend that you register now. That's the link there um, up on our main uh, tech conference site. The, um, it's targeted at ML enthusiasts and researchers, um, and he'll basically be talking about um, not only classifying images, but also building language models. Um, Nicholas is a, a great speaker, so uh, just register for that if you want even more information, because that will probably get, um, get booked up quite quick. 
and again, I'll, I will refer you back to the cheat sheet. This is the, the go-to place. Um, have that stuck in your, in your favorites bar um, because all the, all the information that you need is, is, is linked to the cheat sheet itself. Um, and again, these slides will be uh, available uh, pretty soon, if not now, on the, uh, on the DL course site. Um, I would again just, just want, if I may say, that um, don't go to the, the actual Gitter uh, just for install questions. Go to the Google group. So again, the, um, the deep learning course itself has already been run, but all the resources are online, all the slides, um, all the recordings, etc. Um, and they will be there um, permanently uh, as much as that can go. So, so please check out the, uh, the courses if, um, if you've come in cold into, into this one. And at that point, I will um, open up to try and answer some of your questions. So apologies if I do go quiet, but what I'm going to be doing is going over to the actual chat to actually read through your questions. Right, okay. Um, trying to figure out uh, on the actual time. We've been going, just let me see. Right, okay, so in Torch, how 1D convolution NN is working. I don't see where I can set the number of filters. Okay, so try using the 2D convolution with one as the secondary dimension. Um, but probably easier to just go to the NN documentation. How is it possible to layer-wise pre-train a neural network in Torch. So doing true pre-training. Um, at this point, I'd like to just thank my colleagues who are also trying to answer some of these while I was actually talking. So doing true pre-training with um, generative models um, is more advanced for most users, but um, transfer learning is available. Um, so you can load CAFE models, um, but the load CAFE import doesn't cleanly import the models. OK, I'll move on from that one. Is distributed MPI like neural network training available in Torch to offload computation to multi-GPU clusters? Yes, there is support for multi-GPU training uh, within a node, but not inter-node support. Um, is digits more likely to support Torch Next or Theano? Um, definitely Torch. Uh, we, we are working um, with all the frameworks, but um, I know we, uh, we definitely want to get Torch fully integrated. Um, I don't want to uh, give out actual dates, but I'd, I would probably say within the next couple of months. Um, we are very actively developing. Um, what is the name of the system used for pedestrian detection and traffic sign recognition? Okay, so there's actually lots of studies on that on that subject. Um, you can either go to Wikipedia or um, Sumith, um, Sumith.ch. Um, he has lots of um, pedestrian papers um, from CBPR, etc. Okay, I think um, I think probably one more question, and then we will wrap up. So can we run torch models or code through Python commands? Yes, um, that can be done with the FP Lua libs, for example. Um, go to, have a look around on the actual GitHub at um, Facebook's um, main FBCUNN code. Um, is is there's lots and lots of documentation on there. So I think at that point, um, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening. Um, massive thank to um, to all my colleagues for the uh, for the lab for helping me uh, put that together, um, and also to my colleagues for um, helping on the on the questions. Um, thank you for your questions, and please um, use the resources 
that we'll put up on the on the deep learning site. Thank you very much.